you start seated. Um, yay, I'm so glad you all are here on this fall. We're not in fall. We're having an argument <laughs> in my household <laughs> because um, the uh, British Commonwealth calendar says that September 1st is autumn. And um, in America, I think we generally go more by the equinoxes, which also is witchier. So <laughs> this is the last little squeeze of summer and I've got some flowers to prove it. We picked some flowers yesterday, which is, uh, we were on a farm yesterday and it's ultimately such a creative place to be. Um, and so I kind of wanted to bring that idea of um, a creative reboot or restart or renewal into uh, our class today. Um, so the idea that, that we're kind of cleansing out what we don't need so that we can breathe in the bounty of the world in a uh, clean way. So let's just begin. Let your eyes close in a comfortable seated position and imagine that eight finger widths above your head, you've got a little kind of pyramid, glowing pyramid. And that is pulling you lightly towards it. I read from this teacher, Tara Judell, that is uh, this idea of the crown chakra, it actually centers that distance above your head. So getting that kind of triangle, eight finger widths above your head, of the crown of your head, as a light pulling. And then below your tailbone, again, that eight finger widths, another pyramid. And so we have this polarity of the rooted grounding nature, the pull and hold of the gravity of earth. and the ascendance to the higher spaces. And this is the realm in which all creative offerings live because we are simply held by the earth, tethered by the sky, and then we are the conduit from which that hug almost exists. And so if we feel the grounding of the earth, the safety of the earth, and we're allowing our mind space to be held by that and not tripping off on all the realms that humans like to trip, then we can clear open the space for the ascendant self or the higher self to channel through us. And that is where the most sustainable offerings of creativity live. So it's not in a place of ego or how am I going to be remembered or who is watching me, but rather this kind of lightning bolt from 
some other place. Just so we really sit here. Feeling that pull again, connecting to the space, eight finger widths above your head. And find the inhale there above your head. And then as you exhale down your body, and then the exhale lands in the pyramid below your tail. And the inhale rises up your body. Connects above your head. And you exhale back down your body. And in this moment, feeling the peace of just being here, just being conduit, cleansing the vessel, not having to be anywhere else or do anything or go through a mental checklist of what you're not doing enough or any sort of tumble into circles that we could get ourselves in, but feeling that sweet ease of being. And if you start to think, the thinking mind taking over for a moment, not being reproachful or angry, but rather just labeling it, thinking and moving back to the breath. Letting the breath be an agent of cleanse to release you of the things that are holding you back or weighting you down. Beautiful. And let's keep our eyes closed and reach our hands out to the sides as far as you can, spreading from fingertip to fingertip, palms spread, and then raise those hands all the way up to the sky, coming into a prayer position above the head and then bringing that prayer to the chest. Let's bow our heads to that prayer in reverence. To all the gifts that we are given to be here, to be able to be here today. Let that go, softly open the eyes. Let's do some a little bit of shoulder rolls just to really open up the shoulders there and then going backwards and then bringing it forwards. Hugging the self. Uh, bringing the, arm, the forearms over the head making a frame over your head and pulling on the elbow. So that's like a really firm little frame and then stretching out the arms. Once again, fingertips up to the sky and then fingertips down. 
and pick your tips back up. Pick your tips towards the front of your space, bringing your fingertips into each other, interlacing, pressing out, rounding the back, curving the C into the entire back. The tailbone comes forward, the head comes forward, the shoulder blades spread, bring the arms up into a giant package, bringing the fingers into a Charlie's Angels style Kali Mudra, reaching over to the left, gaze up to the top elbow and then maybe to the sky or see any above. Left arm comes down to the ground, reaching over, opening the side body, elbow up to the sky, ground down the right hip, looking up into the elbow and the sky, open the palm to the sky. And like you're watercoloring in a rainbow, the, the ceiling, <laughs> touch the sky all the way down to the back, down behind the sacrum. Oh, and a slow open, yes, all the way down. And then bring that left arm up to the sky Weight comes into the hand behind the sacrum and reach up to the sky, bend the elbow, the back arm, and then coming back into the center. Both arms come to the center, reach out. Arms come up, fingertips up, fingertips down. Fingertips back up, face the front of the room. Interlace the other way. You can remember where the non-habitual way, pressing out, curling into the back, C curve, opening the shoulder blades, the head and the tail like a magnet, like one of those old-fashioned cartoon magnets, horseshoeing, then pressing the chest through, raising up to the sky, coming into that Kali Mudra a little Charlie's Angel leaning over to the right letting the ribs open like an accordion yes opening up that side body breathing into it oh yes taking that glorious breath into the side ribs expanding in a three-dimensional way here gazing up to the ceiling or sky, past the top elbow, reaching the right arm all the way down to the ground, reaching over. And then again, spreading those ribs up towards the sky, opening them like an accordion. Bringing the chest to the sky, the arm, top arm, the left arm reaches back like you're watercoloring with like a big old smear of paint onto all the way down, pass down to the tailbone, putting the weight onto that left arm, reaching the right arm up into an arch, bending the left arm. Noticing if you're holding your breath and then coming back into the center. Nice. Let's come to a little bit of hands and knees here. Pressing into the hands, raising the knees up, spreading the shoulder blades, coming into a little package above the ground, hovering into the ground, coming forward onto your hands and then back onto your feet, forward onto your hands, back onto your feet, forward onto your hands, back onto your feet, pressing, walking with your hands all the way to the back of the mat, releasing your head, shaking your head out, no, shaking it out, yes, rolling up into a slow, slow, stacking mountain of a posture. Yeah. Let's 
standing. Here we are. Let's walk casually to the front of our mat. Super cash. Nothing to say here. I'm super casual. There's like a, a very ominous uh, cactus right in front of me. It was like, it's threatening. <laughs> it's so phallic. <laughs> I'm just going to like dive down. <laughs> Deep throat that cactus. <laughs> if you have a cactus in front of me, move it. Okay, standing at the top of our mat, slowly our shoulder blades back onto our body. Let's feel this mountain pose for a second. So really feeling the feet grounded into the earth. Let's open the palms to the front of the space of the, where you're headed, where, where you're directed. <sighs> and feel, and then you can release the palms, but feel that opening still of the shoulders. So your, your collarbones are wide, your head is long. You're still feeling that pull beneath the tailbone and above the head, and you reach the arms all the way up to the sky, and then float down in a flat back all the way to forward folded bend. Exhale it all out, everything you don't need. With your next inhale, gaze your heart and your head forward to the space above your mat. And then bend the knees and step back into a plank position. Holding this plank for one full breath. And then lowering all the way while resisting with the lower abdominals away from the ground. All the way to the mat. Nice. Pointing your toes out, clicking your toenails onto the ground, pressing your hands into the ground and let your heart come forward as your shoulder blades squeeze in the back, gazing back down to the ground, tuck your toes, come back into plank, come into your downward dog. First downward dog, pressing into the ground with your fingertips, all five fingers on both hands. Maybe even the palm, press with the palm. Getting that charge from the earth. So like, we're not doing this alone. You can actually pull from the energy of the earth, the grounding of the earth. So we're not just like floating in space. From the grounding of the earth, that's how we can fly. Pressing back into this glorious pose, letting each Half, maybe straighten and bend. Finding your way into the movement today. Looking forward. Let's walk our feet to our hands. Release into that forward folding bend here. Shake the head out. No, shake it out. Yes. Letting the head just dangle off of the neck. Pressing into the ground with your feet, we'll reverse swan dive, letting the lower abdominals come and protect the back as we reach our arms all the way up to the sky. Clasp the hands again, open up the palms here. Nice, and we'll come back into that Charlie's Angels pose and we'll do the side bending as we're standing. So grounding into the earth, lifting up above your kneecaps will bring that Kali Mudra, that Charlie's Angels, um, G-U-N, into the left, reaching over to the left as we open the side body of the right side, gazing down into the ground, and then gazing up into the sky, breathing into that side body, bowing it over to the right, and raising up back into center. Nice. And then I'm just facing you now, but you can stay where you're staying. And then reaching over to the right as we open up the left side body like a banana. Let's banana this out. Gazing down into the ground. Gazing up into the sky. Open up the ribs. Stick 
that left hip out even further. And then arms come back up. Let's do just a couple of those easy um, sun salutations to warm the body up. So arms float down in a swan dive. Navels into the spine. Release the head. Gaze forward. Heart and head come forward. Bend the knees. Step back to the plank. Plank. Chaturanga, or all the way down to the floor. I'm going all the way down to the floor today. And coming up into baby cobra, or if you feel like up or down already, that's fine. Coming back down, pressing back into that plank. Press back into downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look at the hands. Let's dance. Dance the legs up to the feet in any way you like. Release the head down and do a forward fold. Reverse the swan all the way up, protecting the back. Looking up, bringing the prayer with an exhale. Setting your intention right now for this next 40 minutes as we move. It can be anything that's personally what you would like to remind yourself if you start to wander. It can be like focus on the breath. It can also be like stay with the movement. It can be like, don't go off in thoughts. It could be just feel good in your body. It can be um, feel the heaven, heavenly divine. <laughs> it can be smile when you think of this, you know, it's, it's personal. So collecting that intention with the prayer package to the heart, sacredly covenanting it, <laughs> Be easy on yourself, that's one. Or maybe if you finding that you're too easy on yourself all the time, it's, this is a good chance for you to stay with poses one second longer than you would want to. Okay, we've got that intention. Inhale, raise up, touching the fingertips for a moment and then letting that uh, bring the arms out into the Swan dive down, pressing the fingertips into the ground, gazing forward, heart in line, bending the knees, jump or step back into plank, all the way down to the ground or chaturanga, baby cobra or upward facing dog, pressing to the ground, downward facing dog. Breathe here, three breaths in this perfect pose. It is like a mountain. I know there's another pose called mountain pose, but this does kind of feel like a mountain. And I like that idea because it's really good to focus on what the apex of this mountain is. So really pressing your tailbone into the sky, letting that the pyramid off your tailbone kind of go in a diagonal off your body. So feeling this three-sided pose. The ground beneath your head, between your hands and feet. From the hands all the way up to the tail. And the tail down into the heels. Bending the legs. Gaze towards the hands. Step or jump all the way to the hands. Release the head and shake it out. Yes and no. Reverse swan dive as you bring the lower abdominals in. All the way in. Bring the prayer down. Exhale. Inhale. Arms up. Exhale. Swan. Forward fold. Exhale. Inhale. Gaze forward. Exhale, bend the legs, jump or step back into plank. Plank here, inhale. Exhale, lowering down to the mat, or chandranga into a baby cobra, inhale. Roll over the toes. Exhale, breathe. Look at the 
again. Jump, step, dance, fly, walk, all the way down. Release the head in the forward fold. Bring the lower abdominals in to protect as you flat back, reverse swan dive, all the way in, bringing the prayer up, down to the heart, remembering that intention. Inhale, up, ba bend back, baby, baby back bend here, and then exhale, swan dive. Gazing forward, jump or step, back, plank. Lowering down, exhale, inhale to that arch cobra, upward, back, downward. Let's bring the left leg up to the sky, open up the hips, spread the legs, bend the legs. Point your foot on the top, flex your foot, point your foot, straighten up your hips. Bring your leg in all the way to your nose as you step forward into a lunge. We got this long lunge here, filling the body. Extend, the hip flexors extend, lowering the back knee to the ground. Anjane Asana Sakis B. Like bada in your hips. Suck the knee and the foot together in an isometric kind of like hug and raise it up into the sky, arching lightly, exhale back down, bring the back toes back up, raise the right knee, step back, plank, lower down all the way to the ground, toes click into the ground, baby cobra, and then raise the fingers off the ground and reach them back into an arch here. Bring the arms back down, press back into child's pose. Releasing the forehead into the ground. Snake forward, so like really let your body, your, your nose come along the mat, your chest come along the mat, all the way up back into Bhujangasana, this arch, this like cobra, where your hands come off the ground, your arms come along the hips. Reach up, let the heart come forward. Now raise up the feet, raise everything off the ground, and then lower, press back into plank, downward dog. Looking at the hands, bending the legs, jump, step, walk, fly. All the way down, release the head, reverse swan dive. All the way up, nice. Coming into fierce pose or chair pose. I like fierce. I don't think it's that scary. It's like fierce. It's called fierce. Okay, coming into fierce pose. So that's um, just you're bending your knees, spreading your toes. Try lifting all your toes off the ground. Like you're reaching back for a chair that's kind of behind you. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Let's bring the palms together, bring the palms to the heart. Then the left, you can lower the toes. The left elbow is gonna come over to the right knee and you're gonna press your elbow into your knee, press into the ground, and then raise the gaze up. Raise the gaze. <laughs> In a good way. Um, up to the sky. Stick the butt out. Yes, very nice. Breathing here, let's take it one step further and let's spread the arms. Yes, really beautiful. Oh, nice. Bringing the palms back together and let's go back into the center of fierce pose. Powerful pose. Feel the power of this pose. Arms come to the center, 
bring that prayer to the chest. Let's bring the right elbow to the left knee. Now your heart is aiming, the center of your sternum is aiming for your thumbs. Pressing back with your bottom leg, really reach your, your tail, spread. Spread out your inner thighs. Yeah, spread your inner thighs, opening up your pelvic floor like a trampoline. Stick out the butt here. Gaze down to your knees to make sure your right knee isn't jetting forward much more than your right left knee. Nice. Spread the arms far apart. Still kind of pushing into that right arm, the left leg. Bring it back to the center. Arms up. Almost done. And straighten. Nice. Getting a little bit of heat in the body. Mm. Raise up. Inhale. Exhale. Float down. Gaze forward. Bend the knees. Step or jump back into that plank. Lower down, chaturanga. Upper facing dog or baby cobra. Tuck the toes, down the dog. Raise the right leg. And then we're gonna come into a um, pigeon prep. So bringing the right knee in. The right knee comes to, towards the right hand the right foot comes towards the left hand and then you can wiggle that back foot back and let's do this upright first so however much you can have a straight like I'm definitely on a diagonal with my my knee to my ankle here but as much as you can bring in a healthy way that foot towards the left hand so we've got this position, and what I want to do is, is open up in, a, in an upright position of this pigeon prep first. So your left hip is cascading towards the ground. Your right knee and your left knee are scissoring together. So feel that kind of magnetic pull of those coming together. And then if you feel stable and strong enough there you can raise the arms up but really feel that that pull with the um, knee and the the knees together nice bringing the arms back down and then the left arm can root down to the ground maybe on fingertips and the left leg bends now this is could be the first step you just feel the intensity of that kind of opening or if you feel like you could put weight into your left arm and reach your right arm back to grab that left foot come into this beautiful pose now don't just pull on the foot you also have to push the foot to the hand so that's how you really feel that great opening in the quad and the hamstrings where I or a lot of stress. Let's go back into fingertips on the left hand and really find the, the, the strength and length in this pose. Breathing full breaths. And release it. Now let's lower the elbows to the ground. Oh, opening up the first chakra. The root chakra <coughs> stores a lot of old emotions and places where we can feel stuck. So this is a really good place to start our creative reboot. Mm. Pressing back into the ground, tuck the lower, the back leg under, so the left leg under, and then we're gonna shoot the right leg up to the sky. Open up. Getting 
letting the lower left the left leg heel lower to the ground as we open up. Yeah. Straighten out the hips. Bring the knee in to the chest. We're gonna come on to the other side of that. The other side of the Anjaneyasana. So starting here, we're going to bring the hands to the knee, opening up the left hip, raising up to the sky, lowering down, raising up the back knee, stepping back into our plank. Lowering down all the way to the ground, baby cobra. Back down, tuck the toes, plank, downward facing dog. Left leg lifts. Bring it through to the knee, to the, to the, um, Pigeon prep on the left. So left knee comes to the right foot. Oh. Spread, oh this is so different. It's interesting how different sides can be, isn't it? Wow. Okay, so starting in that kind of supported pigeon prep, letting your hips sink into it, feeling that isometric pull, left leg, to right knee, and then finding how we can potentially lift the hands. If you're not in a place to lift the hands, don't stress. Raising the hands. Oh. Feeling the glory of that pose. And then grounding your right hand bending your right knee, left arm can maybe come to grab that foot, pressing the foot into the hand, pulling from the hand into the foot, the hand into the ground, tucking the back toe, lifting the left leg up to the sky, open up the hips, straighten out the foot, straighten out the hips, lower the foot down to downward facing dog. Gazing up towards the hands, bending the knees, jump, hop, step, walk. Release the head, reverse swan dive all the way up. Ooh. Prayer at the top. Bow to this heart. Let's take our right leg back. Let's step it back into a uh, like a warrior two position. Warrior two. So this is the back leg is on a 45 degree angle. The right leg, no, the left leg is bent. Close as you can to 90, just think about that 90. And then let your, let your hips kind of spread so you feel the center position. 
So your arms are reaching either way to each side, reversing this warrior. So the left arm comes up, the right arm comes to the back leg. We open up the side body, keeping that knee bent. And then arm comes over the front leg, elbow comes down into the thigh or to the ground. And bring it to the thigh. Back hip really roots on the outside line of the leg, all the way to the outside of the foot. The right arm comes over the ear in a long extension. Find a diagonal from your arm all the way to your foot so it's on like the same line, long line. And then gaze up to the sky. And then coming back into warrior two, straighten the leg, coming in triangle, reaching out over the left leg. Let your arm like feel like it's being pulled the other direction as well. So someone pulling your arm on either side as you reach as far as you can out on this plane and then flip that into the long line of a triangle becoming the perpendicular to the ground. Your arm can go on the thigh, on a block, on the ground, hovering. There's many different choices here. I'm gonna use a block. I like a block in this pose. Grounding that back foot so the outside of the back foot is really grounded into the earth. And now I want you to think about your front knee, raising the energy above the knee. So you're not coming into a crazy forced straightness, but rather an energetic lift of straightness using the musculature of the body. Gaze up towards the sky. And we're going to come into warrior three. So if you have a block, you can bring it with you. Or if you just want to gracefully, <laughs> trying to say gracefully. So reaching forward in like a one movement into warrior three. Flex the back foot so you can really feel that opening. The top hip is up towards the sky. Finding the gaze can come to the ground or in front of you. Oh. Now bend that standing leg, reach back with the right foot and then come back into warrior two. Beautiful. Straightening the leg. Let's just change positions by bringing the feet forward first actually come into Prasarita first. Let's lower in this big triangle, head to the ground. Toes are both facing the long side of your mat. Arms can come out in front of you in like a long, really juicy downward dog. It's kind of fun. Or you can also bring your arms back behind you. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure there. Okay, let's arms go wide. Remember, protect the lower back as you can bring a flat back all the way up. Nice. And then let's come to warrior two on the other side. So the right leg is bending. Left leg. Feel that connection with the ground on the outside of the foot and the arch is raising. Arms are long. Spread the hip bones apart from each other here so that you're kind of, you find the center of this pose. You're not leaning over the front of the body. Gaze is off the center of the middle finger. Feel the ground plugging into your feet. Suck the feet together, like isometrically on the ground. Reversing 
open up the right palm, sweep the sky, kind of opening. Let the knee counteract where the arm, the top arm is going. So your knee is going forward, your arm is going back. You can gaze up or down here. And then this kind of graceful way to sweep the top of the, the elbow to the knee. Or if you like here, you can do a side ankle pose. Left arm comes along the ear, extending all the way in a diagonal. So again, feeling that long line from the foot all the way to the fingertips on the left side. Bringing the tits closer to the sky as you gaze up, shoulder blades on your back. Coming back into warrior two. Nice, keep that bend of the front leg and then now you can straighten. Okay, we're gonna come into that triangle and then forward to um, warrior three. So I'm gonna get my block, but you can do this easily without a block as well. Or maybe not easily, but <laughs> arms out. Just bring the hips to the left, ribs to the right, reaching here. Imagine this two, two panes of glass a little bit here, so you're not like crunching forward. So you, you've got a limitation. I used to love to do this, and then this tilt too. I used to love to do triangle on international flights against the bulkhead. So I would just lean against the bulkhead and then wait for a random stewardess to be surprised by me. <laughs> Reach out and grab it. I know. But I would get a lot of, you know, the people in the seats, right? You could see me just kind of like watching me. And, and, am I weird? Lifting up off the kneecap, above the kneecap, so don't let that front leg go to sleep. Bending the right leg, and then in your one graceful swoop, pressing, beautiful, off of that back leg into warrior three. Warrior three with the hips open. See if you can bring that gaze in front of you or maybe to the top arm. Flexing the back foot and letting the foot be energized to keep it there. Bending the front leg, pointing the back foot. Delicately stepping back into warrior two. Straightening the leg, bringing both feet forward. Let's hug myself. Oh, it's just Hug it out. Oh, nice. Oh, you've done so well. So we opened up our lower chakra. We did a little bit of triangle is really good for the solar plexus. Okay, I think we're good to move to the ground. Let's um step to the front of the mat. And let's um, experiment with how we can sit down to the ground without using our hands. And it could be a failure and that's okay. So we bend our legs. I reach my hands forward. I bring up my heels and then slowly bring my butt to the ground. <laughs> nice. Okay, we're gonna come into a Navasana series and. I encourage you to work with a little mantra that I like to call too easy. It's too easy through this, through this series, okay? It's too easy. What? This is too easy. Okay. Let's bring the knees up. Grabbing behind the knees here. 
And then from this position where you're grabbing the knees, um, I want you to actually suck the thighs together and the knees together. Point the toes. Now bring the chest closer to the knees. Nice. Now from this position, we're going to reach our arms alongside our knees. Nice. From this position, we're going to see if we can extend the legs straight while also bringing the sternum up balancing on the tailbone, finding that little shake, too easy. <laughs> bringing back the knees to the bent position, bringing the hands to the back behind the knees, bringing the chest up. Once again, releasing the hands, extending the legs, bringing the chest up, keeping the legs straight, suck together, right? Bend the legs, chest comes up, Bring the feet down, crawl into a bowl. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do that once again, but adding on. Too easy. It's too easy. What this? It's too easy. All right, coming back. Navasana, suck the thighs together. Release the hands. Straighten the legs. Chest up. Feet up, lower to lower Navasana. Toes up to the sky, gaze at the toes, focus on the toes. Look at the big toe, the second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, bringing it back up into high boat, bending the legs, clasping onto the back of the thighs, chest forward. This is your resting position. Arms extended, release the kraken, <laughs> extend the feet. Chest up, lower boat pose, toes up, wiggle your toes, big toe, second toe, middle toe, fourth toe, pinky toe, upward boat, bend the legs, arms behind the knees, chest up, fall into a boat. One last time, guys, you are killing it. You're murdering it. You're absolutely decimating this. Why does everything have to be so violent? You guys are living this. You're making it breathe. You're making it grow. You're making it, you're making it completely bloom and blossom in the most beautiful way. All right. Raise the legs up. Hands behind the knees. Suck the thighs together. Chest up. Straighten the legs, release the hands, toes up, lower boat, upper boat, lower boat, upper boat, lower boat, hover, five, four, three, two, upper boat, bend the knees, clasp behind the back, chest up, release the feet, oh, nice, reach the arms out, Chest up, long from the head. Feel again that that pyramid above the skull. And then one vertebrae at a time, we lower onto the back. Rolling down. Nice. Releasing the head, releasing everything. The feet are standing. Let's come into a bridge pose here. Pressing the feet into the ground, raising the pelvis up. And then once you got into this kind of slope that Tennyson's car Hot Wheels could really easily <laughs> drive down <laughs> without hitting any spots. That's how you know you're in the, that's what the yogi, ancient yogis used to do, is they took Tennyson's Hot Wheels and made sure it could drive down. So that probably means that you need to lift at your chest, at your hips a little bit more because it seems like it would get stuck there. So then once you've got this, let's roll the shoulder blades underneath the back, clasp the hands underneath, pressing that clasp hands into the ground. So then you're raising out of the chest, pressing back lightly into the back of the skull. Expanding the breath three-dimensionally. 
really feeling the, the lungs in this position being able to really expand. Oh, it feels so good. In this position, if you can bring one leg, heel comes up and then foot comes up, stamp out the ceiling, bend it down, other leg, heel comes up, foot comes up, stamp out the ceiling, down, release the shoulder blades, release the clasped hands, slowly roll all the way down, nice. And then just coming into an easier kind of flow of that position, we're raising the hips and the arms at the same time, in an inhale, and exhale. The arms are coming down by the hips and the hips come down and the inhale. Arms come over the head and inhale. Bringing the knees into the chest. Hugging the knees. Releasing the lower left leg, hugging the right knee in, hugging the right knee to the right shoulder, hugging the right knee to the left shoulder. Bringing that knee all the way over into the ground on the left side, reaching out the right arm, gazing towards the right palm. Coming back onto the back, hugging the chest into the knee, into the chest, release that leg and bring the left leg in. Hug the knee into the chest. Bring that knee over to the left side. Bring it to the right side, right shoulder. And then bring the knee all the way over to the ground on the right side. Releasing that left arm out, gazing. Release the bring that, that knee in towards the chest. Releasing it back down to the ground. Mm, letting yourself completely relax on the ground. Feeling the benefits of the practice. How it energizes the body. Brings us out of the eternally confusing brain space by yoking the heart to the brain. The heart that is not just our heart, it's all of our hearts. And practicing together is a great way to feel this kind of elusive oneness. As we move ourselves into the same shapes, scattered across the world. Sinking into the earth.
letting your bones become crystals. Long crystals that are charged by the ground. The heaviest part of our being is, is earth, basically. Bones. Feeling our bones nestle into the earth for ultimately a little As our skin covers those bones, gets charged by that big solar star. Taking a big breath here. Stretching your arms over your head in kind of a morning yawn shape, rolling over one side. Nestling into the fetal for just one moment. Pressing into the ground. Could you come to a seated position? And just this last two minutes, we'll do that same breath that we started with, just to affirm this kind of sense of leaving behind through this practice what is getting in our way of ascending to our highest self. So letting the bones ground into the earth, feeling that pyramid eight finger widths below the tailbone, and the eight widths above the crown of the head, feeling that hovering pyramid of the chakra, crown chakra. We breathe in through the crown chakra pyramid and the breath exhales through the body all the way down to the tail and at the end of the exhale circles around the lower pyramid and the inhale snakes up the body the central line the nadi shodhana Shodra, all the way up into the pyramid on the top of the head. And then the exhale circles around and snakes down. Do that for a few rounds on your own. Clearing the channel so you can truly be the conduit of the ease of creation. Stepping into the flow and not the muscle and push. And 
after your next exhale, using the inhale to raise the arms up to the heavens, bringing the palms together, bringing the palm package to the third eye, blessing the intuition that you have into the heart, bowing the head, closing our practice with tuning up our voice chakra, tuning up the instrument of the sound, the eternal, essential, primordial sound of O. Exhale it out. Inhale. One O. O. so much for joining me here. Thank you so much for being on this circle. I hope that this Sunday is glorious for you.